Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Moms Who Know podcast. Today's podcast is Couples Who Know, so it's James and myself talking all about communication in marriage. So grab your spouse, give it a listen, and stay tuned at the end for this week's discussion of the week. Hello and welcome to the Moms Who Know podcast. Today is a special episode of Couples Who Know, and my husband James is going to start us off and introduce our topic. Hi, everyone. Today we are going to talk about communication in marriage. This is something that I'm really excited to talk about because, uh, for one, I've learned a lot over the years on how to be an effective communicator with my spouse because she's taught me a lot of good things. And we've learned some things along the way that hopefully we can share with you that will really help you in your marriage. Thank you. Well, I feel like, you know, we've learned from each other and learned how to communicate and learned to really work out our communication and make it be smoother and, and run smoother. And I feel like this is a topic you hear a lot in marriage, right? Like communication, you know, it's one of those vital foundational things that in order to have a strong marriage relationship, you have to have strong communication. And I feel like though, that it, it's not an easy thing at the same time. And so James, let's talk about a little bit what gets in the way of good communication in marriage. We know it's important. So why is it not happening all the time? You bet. So I'm just going to pick out a couple things that stand out to me right off the bat. I know that you and I both don't do well when we're tired um, when one of us want to start a conversation when <laughs> in this big, huge dialogue, when we're just, we're sleepy, right? We don't, we don't want to talk about it or like right after, um, there's a big event, uh, that we get home from <laughs> doesn't work out well for me. So that, and being hungry, so tired and hungry, I know are two things that neither of us do well at. We, we, We've got to make sure that those two things are taken care of before we have a deep conversation, I feel like. Yeah. And I think that's interesting that you pointed that out. So um, James is more gets his energy uh, refreshed when he has a little bit of time and space alone. And so when we're out, he needs that little time to kind of, you know, refresh and be ready to talk again. And so we can come home from being out in a group and I'm like, I have all this stuff to talk about and you sometimes need some time. And I'd say on the, for me, it's at night when I am tired, I am ready for bed. I am not, I don't want to get in a conversation. It, you know, when I'm tired, I'm tired. It's over. It's over. You got that right. <laughs> no. So I, I, that's true. That's true. You know, another thing that I was going to point out is unresolved issues. That is something that really gets in the way of having a good dialogue or just good communication in general with your spouse. If if there's something on the table that hasn't been resolved, it seems that that just kind of gnaws and is there in the back of your mind and um, can really affect trying to get through the day to day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, definitely. If there's something that's bugging you, it's going to kind of color and taint like everything else that you're doing. And so I feel like, you know, I think this is something we've had to navigate because James doesn't like to have discussions in front of the kids sometimes. (laughs) And I am like, if something is on my mind and I feel like we need to talk it out. I'm like, but we need to talk about it right now, like right now. And then sometimes he'll want to put it off until we can be alone and talk about it privately. And then it doesn't go well all the time because I'm like, ah, but we need to talk about this thing. And so we've had to learn to navigate that. And sometimes that means it means different things. Sometimes for me, it means cool it and wait until we can talk privately. And sometimes it means set aside what we're doing, you know, if we're doing the dishes or getting kitchen cleanup done or whatever, and tell the kids we'll be right back and then go and hash it out, whatever it is. I think that's important to to point out. Both spouses are going to be different and uh, there's a lot of give and take there, right? To make concessions. If it's something really that's bothering your spouse and you need to talk about it, 
um, Chanel's right. Yeah, there's some times where I just want to talk in private. And um, I don't know, I guess with the kids around it, they ask a lot of questions. And I guess, you know, I don't <laughs> it just makes me feel like I'm on guard a little bit more and I can talk a little bit more freely when it's just us. So that's important to me. And I think Chanel respects that. And on the same token, I'll, I'll try to respect that if it's something that we really need to talk about right away, then let's, let's do that so that we can just move on. Yeah. And that's been a process, like a learning process for us in our marriage. We had to kind of figure that out and find out what works. And of course we're still learning it because there are times when, you know, I'm like really want to talk about something right now and can't do it because the kids are there and we can't have that time away. And anyway, it's just a process though of working together and recognizing that the issue is, you know, not as important as the marriage. And I think we'll get more into that later, but that's just one of the things that does get in the way. One last thing on this topic. I think that it's just so important that you're talking with your spouse openly about what it is that gets in the way of good communication. So if you've got, if you're in this rut of this repetitive thing, that's just not going well, really talk about it and talk about what's going to make make it better because as Chanel's pointed out, like we've, we've had to navigate this throughout our marriage. I mean, we're still not pros at it, but we, I think over the years we've learned how to talk about it and, um, you, you become one, you know, like, okay, like if I bring this up right now, like that's probably not a good idea. And you just, you get to know your spouse and and it can't be something that's going to, Um, bother you so much that you just don't want to talk about it. I I think when it gets to that point, that's when you start to get in trouble and it never gets talked about. It's bottled up and you find that, you know, you're, you're a little in trouble there. So be open with each other, I guess is what I'd say to help navigate good communication. Yeah. And being willing to, to go there along those lines, to go into the places of what are the real issues? What are the real concerns? Because sometimes I feel like another thing that gets in the way of good communication is just staying in the shallow, like just, okay, what's for dinner? And, um, you know, what kid needs to be driven where at what time? And in marriage, there's so much to navigate with your family and your family life and, you know, money and, just your schedule and all those things, you can really stay in those superficial conversations and not get into the deeper things. And even though you're talking and you're not fighting, your communication is not what it could be. Yeah. Yeah. You know, while you're saying that, I was just thinking about one thing that can get in the way of of good communication is pride. Um, When you are prideful and you're maybe always thinking that you're right or your spouse just does not have a good point to be made like they just are talking nonsense that can be something that can really hinder your relationship Uh, of course we know pride it can be a bad thing and um for me i know that i really have had some prideful moments in our marriage where i just think that i'm right and um you know, that's, that's not okay. I think that you're going to have to really swallow that pride to, to make any headway. I I don't think I know. I mean, you just need to. And it's, if you're thinking it's always about who's got the better argument, you're, you're going to go in circles. (laughs) Okay. I'm going to just say James is being super, um, humble about this and, and (laughs) humble about your pride. No, I am. I, this is a harder one for me. James is really good about this, just listening. And I, I really have to get over myself because I want to prove that I'm right and come up with this, you know, argument and debate. And, um, and that, this is one for me. I feel like you don't struggle with that very much at all. He, James is a really great listener and that's super helpful because, uh, sometimes I definitely get in this trap. Well, I guess it's fair to say no one wants to be wrong. Right. <laughs> right. Right. But, yeah. I think that it, it can be a trap. So something to be aware of. Um, the other one that I was going to point out of things that get in the way of good communication is cell phones. 
Totally. Man, you know what? I just, they are so distracting. I feel like for work, for me, it is just constant. I mean, I could pick up the phone at any day or any time of the day, I should say, and there'll be a new issue to handle. And I'm sure that's the same for many, if not all of you. So there's some things that we have worked out with cell phones, some rules that I'll let Chanel talk about that have really helped our marriage. Yeah. So we try to keep our cell phones out of the family area um, when we're out with the family in the evening and we try to keep them, we charge our cell phones in the laundry room. And so we try to keep them back there during family time. And if we need to go check, fine, we go and check, but it's not sitting there uh, out with the family and some, we're not perfect about this. Sometimes we'll bring it out and sometimes we'll call each other out on it. Hey, what are you doing on your, on your phone there? Um, and another thing we've done is with date nights. Um, we definitely, sometimes you, you have to bring your phone on a date night, right? You've got your kids or we have, if we have younger babysitters or something and you feel like you need to have your babysitter be able to get a hold of you. But what we do is try to not put the phone on a table, not keep it right there in the middle of our conversation and definitely not be looking at it, texting, checking it during, during our dates. I like that one because the date one, if, if you can just show your spouse that they are the number one priority, especially on that date, that's going to go a long way and just, yeah, put it away. I, we were out the other night, um, at a restaurant where both the couple, the couple, both of them were on their phones and just the entire time, I was just kind of glancing over there every once in a while because um, I knew we were going to be talking about communication coming up here. And I thought, man, they they just aren't really saying anything to each other. And I just kind of felt sad for them. They were just both on their phones the entire time and really didn't have a conversation going. Anyway, that might sound a little judgy, but I, I just it's important to to let your spouse know that um, they're the most important. For for guys out there, uh, I give you a, a bro tip here. Don't sit in a place where you can see the TV if you're oh, out at a restaurant. Man, why do they even have those yeah, TVs at just, restaurants? They're, they're everywhere now, right? It doesn't even matter where you go. But um, I don't know. It just gets distracting, right? Especially if there's a game on and you're glancing up. Just intentionally sit where you can't see the TV and... That'll make things so much better. It's so much easier to sit where you can't see the TV or to put your phone where you can't reach it than to try to use self-control. Because if you sit where you can see the TV, you're talking, but then all of a sudden your eyes are looking up at the TV. And, you know, if when you're in a conversation, you can tell if the person's eyes are looking up at the TV or if you've got your phone in the room, you know, and then a text comes in, it's just really easy, I think, for all of us to slip into that. Agreed. So if you could tell us, Chanel, what makes a fun or exciting conversation in marriage? Yeah. Okay. I think that this is a fun topic to even talk about because I think that we can all picture those conversations that we've had that are just, you know, if you think back to when you were dating and getting to know your spouse and where you go on these dates and just feel like you can talk forever and you can get to know so much about this person and it's so much fun. I feel like those kind of conversations don't have to stop just because you're married. And I know um, they don't happen every day for sure. But when we have those conversations, I love it when it's, I mentioned earlier, when I am tired, I am tired. I like to go to bed pretty early. I get up early and it's just bedtime when it's bedtime. But um, sometimes when we are just talking, we stay up late and we just don't want to go to bed because we're we're into this conversation and that is when I know it's a really good conversation is we're just talking and having so much fun. But what's happening in that conversation is we're really getting to know each other. We're finding out things about each other that maybe we didn't know before things, you know, from our past, our growing up years or things about the future and dreaming together. And that's so much fun with your spouse to kind of say, what do you want to happen? Like what, what's the possibility? What do we think could 
happen in the future. Yeah. Isn't that so fun? That is one of the coolest things about being married is just you will never stop learning about your spouse. And it's pretty cool to to learn new stuff. You know, we've been married for it'll be 19 years this year and it's just it's wow, you know, when we get to talking, I just learn so much and there's there's so much there and it 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 excites me. Something else that really excites me about um conversation and talking together is just hearing the excitement um from Chanel when she's excited about something, it gets me excited about something. So be passionate, be be excited about life or something, whatever it is that you're excited about. If you're struggling with conversation in your marriage, talk about something that you're passionate about and and really listen. Listen to your spouse and what excites them. Yeah. And that listening piece is huge. I think that's the other part that makes a really fun conversation is knowing that your spouse is really listening. So when your husband is talking to you or your wife is talking to you to really tune in and to really listen and ask follow-up questions and just be totally excited about what they're sharing. And that that's just super fun to be listened to and then to really be on the listening end and be learning these new things, like James said. I want to share one thing that can kickstart you um, on this conversation Talk about, you know, Chanel mentioned your your dreams, but travel. I mean, if if you, maybe traveling's not for you, but um, I think that you, you can talk about something that you'll both be excited about, a, a place where you'd both like to go. And that for us, that I can remember one night where we just got really excited about travel plans. And um, it was at a time where we're, really, we knew we couldn't do it right away. One for finances too, because we're in the middle of raising all these kids, but it's, it was really fun to talk about it. We got a jar. We wrote all these different places we wanted to go on a piece of paper. Um, we put it in the jar and, um, it, it was, it's just fun. We still have the jar and those goals in mind of where we want to go. And it was really fun to talk about. Yeah, and that that's a fun one too because that jar is still on our dresser right now and when we have spare change or a few bucks here and there, we drop them in and so it's not just it's a, it's a dream but it's also a plan, right? We're putting mm-hmm. money aside to that to that purpose. So yeah. Anything that you can do to just dream whether it's travel or, you know, future ideas, just whatever it is for the two of you. So we've talked about all these, you know, things that hold us back from conversation, things that make fun conversation, but I want to get a little bit deeper here into how to really do it because we all know it's important. We know there's some things that hold us back. Hopefully we painted a picture of the vision of like what a great conversation can be. But why is this not happening? And how, really, James, I'd like you to talk a little bit about how. How do we do it? How do we have good communication? You know, I'm just going to make an observation. I I can I see so many people, and I'm sure all of you do too, when they're at work or when they're outside of their home, like they can turn it on, right? Like they can have these really cool conversations and be bubbly and stuff. And then when they get home from work or when they get home from just being out with friends, like it's off. Like, okay, I'm home and now I'm just going <laughs> to not talk. And so that to me is sad. So where I'm going with this is you've got to be able to turn it on when you're home. Maybe you're not going to be able to do that right when you get home from work. But at some point you need to take that time consciously to turn on and talk and engage. So I would say, be prepared, be prepared, be ready at some point in the day to engage intentionally with your spouse. Yeah, I love that. And I think even for people, you know, for stay at home moms, it's still can be the same thing. You've given and given all day and you've been with kids. And even though you want that interaction, it's like, oh, I just need a break. I don't want to, you know, put any effort in, I guess, is kind of what I hear you saying is that it's kind of can be, I mean, it's effort to have good communication and it's easy to just 
feel like, uh, not, not right now. I don't want to do that right now. Yeah. One of the things that I pointed out earlier about being tired. I mean, I, I, gosh, I talked to so many people and they're just like, I'm just tired all the time. <laughs> and, and life is pretty tiring. It, it is, but don't let that be something that's going to be your, your roadblock. Um, when I say be prepared mentally, at least for me, if I tell myself, look, like I'm going to take this time to talk to my wife and um, it may only be, you know, at least 20 minutes. We've, we've had that advice. I think we've brought it up before on this podcast, 20 minutes at least at night to touch, to connect and, and game on you'll have a positive experience. If you can just let yourself know that that's something you want to do and make that investment in your marriage, it'll be worth it. Yeah. I, um, I love that part. And I think that sitting close, you know, holding hands or snuggling up on the couch is a big part of it too. And the reason, especially I feel like is because it reminds you, um, why you want to have this communication and why it matters and why you're going to put the effort in. I remember one time, um, I don't know, I can't remember exactly what the situation was, but I was irritated about something. And, um, one of the kids said to me, I called James love a lot or my love. And, um, one of the kids said something about uh, that. I needed to go talk to, you need to go talk to your wub. (laughs) And I was like, Oh, but I'm irritated at my wub right now. And then I thought, how can I, when you're thinking of it in that context, context, like how can I be irritated at my love? You know, it's easy to be irritated at your husband, but when you're irritated at your love, it just changed my perspective. It shifted it. And I think that's kind of what that touching piece does. And I know sometimes when we are going to have, you know, we have kind of an issue, a serious thing to to talk about. Sometimes we'll hold hands and just remind each other. It's just that connection that the person that you're talking to is more important than the issue. It's just being really clear about the relationship comes first and all these things that come up, they're things that you're going to work through because you're in it together. But it's just a reminder of that. I love it. I love it. You know, I, I, I want to um, I want to tell you that sometimes it's not easy to just like, okay, we're gonna we have something really hard to talk about when we might be upset with each other, so let's go sit down and hold hands. Like that sometimes <laughs> initially is not, you know, let's be real. That's just sometimes you don't want to do that. So something that's worked for us is okay, so take that time to talk, right? We're intentionally gonna do this. And you go sit on the couch and just you're just sitting next to each other to where your your shoulders are touching. Right? Okay, so you can do that, right? If you're mad at somebody, your spouse, you can go sit by them and have your shoulders touch. Right? Hopefully. Okay. Or if you can't, just try to get to that place where you can have your shoulders touching. And then as you're talking, okay consciously make that effort okay like so i'm gonna put my hand on on her knee or we're gonna we're gonna hold hands and just you know slowly get into that and when you physically make that transition you'll find you'll be able to have open communication it's magic it really is it really is and pay attention to this because it's very interesting when you have even say you're sitting there and holding hand, hands with your spouse and then you start to have a conversation that's heated. It's so easy to let go and lean away. Yeah. Like our bo- our physical bodies are reacting to our emotions, and but we can consciously shift it the other way. Well, it's like this energy, right? Yeah. It's just, that's there and it can be negative or it can be positive. So um, I just, just try it. Just try it. If if you find yourself not wanting to talk or have that hard conversation, just I challenge you to try it. And it's it's pretty neat. Yeah. Okay. I think that's a great one to try. Another thing that I wanted to point out on how to have communication. This is uh, something that we learned from David Bednar. And he said to talk about talking when you're not talking about anything else. And 
We um, heard that counsel from him early in our marriage, and it, I, it's just such good counsel because a lot of times we talked earlier about unresolved issues, that those get in the way. But what happens is, uh, let me give an example. I think that this this illustrates it better than just kind of talking about it. So the other day we were on a date and I was just kind of grumpy with James and he was like, what's wrong? And I was saying very silly things that weren't really the problem. Like, Oh, I don't know if I want to go to this restaurant. And he's like, well, we can go somewhere else. And I'm like, well, I, you know, everything he did was basically wrong. Have you ever done that? (laughs) (laughs) That's terrible to admit out loud, but basically that's kind of where it was. And he's trying to resolve it and just, and you know, he's questioning, well, what, you know, what is it? And I took just a minute to, um, take a deep breath and figure out kind of what the issue was and then kind of backed up. So it really is doing the work yourself to say, what is really going on here? And what was really going on that night was I was upset about something totally different. He had to go out of town and take care of something and I was not happy about it. And it was really about that. Anyway, this concept of talk about talking when you're not talking about anything else is the idea that we need to talk about how our communication flows and what we need to do to have better communication instead of in the heat of the moment when I'm grumpy and saying, oh, no, not that restaurant and, you know, I don't want to do this or whatever, that that's not really going to lead to a productive conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just laughing because it's it's being more, it's more clear to me um <laughs> that night you're talking about I just I would say that if you can be patient because we're all going to have off times right we're all going to be the one maybe at one point that's grumpy right it's not always just Chanel sometimes I'm grumpy and that's great advice, you know, to figure out what it is that you're upset about. And um, I think we were able to resolve that pretty quickly, right? Um, even in the car, we talked about yeah. it before we went in the restaurant. And it was like, okay, like, this is what's going on. Had had some conversation. We're able to resolve it to the point where we could talk more about it during the date. If Right, because sometimes you you don't even want to. You have to bridge the gap. Is yeah. That, so you you okay? Like you've identified, and then you can just like okay, move on, and and get those the the bad feelings I guess behind you are out of the way, because I mean yeah, it's it's not always roses. Just um, we're gonna go on a date and we're gonna have a bunch of fun, a, a fun time. You you've got all these other things, like brewing, right? Lots right. of other stuff going on. So I think that's cool that you were able to do that. You were able to, to take a deep breath and figure out what was going on. Yeah. I think that I've gotten better about that over the years, but I think that that's can be a big source um, of better communication in marriage is really working to understand yourself and understand what it is you really want to say, because it's so easy to try, you know, to just make something else the scapegoat or the issue that's not really the issue. And if you want to have good communication, you need to be honest with yourself and clear with yourself about what it is you want to talk about and what it is that needs to be resolved in your marriage so that you can have good communication. Right. Say what you mean and mean what you say, right? Yes. Who is that? That Saturday Night <laughs> that's Live? Mad TV. Oh, I Mad think. TV. We, yeah. uh, there's that one we like to watch. Um, yeah, I just, it is. It's important to, to mean what you say. And, and say what you mean. And I, I would just leave you with, gosh, it's so fun to have good, meaningful conversations. There's so much to talk about. And, and if you're struggling with figuring out what it is that you would like to talk about, maybe jot it down. Maybe when you're in your pondering moments, if it's at night or in the morning, when you're really in there in your reflection time, take some time to think about what you'd like to talk to your spouse about. And um, I think that it can really bless your lives, your marriage.
Totally. And just really prioritize this idea of good communication. It really is the foundation that everything else in your marriage depends on. If you guys can't talk about things that are going on, then you're really going to have a hard time. And it starts at that most basic level of, you know, communicating the simple things and then having those fun conversations and getting deeper is the next level. But once you have that connection, then even when the conversations are harder, because they're not always going to be easy, we're going to have hard things to talk about. You're going to have paved the way and kind of smoothed the road with all the the other work that you've done to have those conversations, but still, you know, work through the hard stuff, but still stay connected and still stay close. So that's our, our main thing about communication. We love talking to each other and we hope you guys do too. And we appreciate you being here with us. Thank you for listening to moms who know. Communication is such a big topic and such an important one for marriage. So I would love to hear your thoughts on communication and on what's worked for you in your marriage. And so the question for this week is what advice would you give to a newlywed couple about communication in marriage? Um, You think of it like a, you know, a bridal shower game where you're able to just write down what advice you would give, what has really worked for you in your marriage. A lot of times we get advice and maybe it doesn't work for us. So what has worked for you? What advice would you give about communication in marriage? Go to Moms Who Know Podcast on Facebook or Instagram and let me know your answer and I will see you guys next week.